Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. Tracy Claremont joining us here, our certified hypnotherapist, life coach, and friend. Welcome back. How are you today? Thank you. I'm doing great. How are you, Joe? I'm doing okay. It's been a while. Good to see you. Please uh, tell everyone a little bit about what you do. Of course. My name is Tracy Claremont. I'm a certified hypnotherapist and a life coach. I am located in beautiful western Montana, and I have an office here that I work out of, but I also do um, sessions, hypnotherapy sessions and life coaching over Zoom. So I can do it with anybody all over the country or the world. And um, because I do understand that Western Montana is uh, not some place that people easily get to. Mm-hmm. But I love doing hypnotherapy over Zoom and to people all over. It's so very interesting. And so I can be reached on my uh, on my website, which is tracyclaremonthypnotherapy.com. And that's T-R-A-C-Y. C-L-A-I-R-M-O-N-T, hypnotherapy.com, or I can be reached via email, and that's hypnowithtracy at yahoo.com, so that's H-Y-P-N-O-W-I-T-H-T-R-A-C-Y at yahoo.com, and I also have an Instagram page, which is also Tracy Claremont Hypnotherapy, so a few different ways that I can be reached. Awesome. And what did you want to discuss for today? Unfortunately, or f- fortunately, no, it's sad. It's your last show you mentioned. So it's our last time together. Uh, but maybe not. You never know. Uh, so what did you have to what did you want to focus on today and want our listeners to learn? Well, I really just want to focus on a message of healing with this uh, tenth podcast. Like you said, I don't know if there's going to be future things or not. But I really want to uh, wrap up these podcasts with a message of, of healing and really encouraging people to take charge of their emotional healing. You know, there's so much suffering that goes on in the world, and uh, there's so many different ways to heal. You know, there, I also, as you know, am a regular licensed mental health therapist is doing psychotherapy. That's one way of healing, of course, but there's so many other ways. There's meditation, acupuncture, and Reiki, and, you know, all sorts of different ways to heal in the world, and I just really want to encourage people to take advantage and take charge of their emotional healing, so, of course, I am a strong believer in hypnotherapy. I love doing it. I see miracles through hypnotherapy all the time, and it always is just an amazing process, and I advocate it because it's a completely natural form of healing you know it's that process of being guided into a completely relaxed state and you know where your nervous system is put to sleep so to speak and where you can access the subconscious mind part of your brain and really do that exploration of past experiences and feelings that drive different issues that people struggle with today and it really makes it so you can really address any kind of issue, you know, because it's all those issues are related to our our experiences that we pack away in our subconscious mind. And a lot of times in regular mental health therapy, and I and I am an advocate of that as well. However, in that process, when you're working with the conscious brain, you know, it takes a lot of time to develop a trust relationship with your client and help them feel safe in your environment to really unpack those things in their conscious minds. And with hypnotherapy, you know, you're guided into that relaxed state so that your nervous system is, you know, put to sleep and you can feel safe to unpack and open up those things in your subconscious mind. So it's a faster process to getting at the core root causes of your issues. And it's uh, very impactful for sure. It's just a great place to to work miracles around your issues. So, you know, it helps you to be in that emotionally regulated state, calm mind, calm body, to do that emotional healing. And a lot of times that's why people don't go to therapy or don't get help to work on their their greatest issues because they're afraid of unpacking those Mm -hmm. things. 
a lot of people have put considerable effort and understandably so because some experiences are so traumatic and scary that you want to lock them away in your mind and just keep them at bay so you can go through your life and your day and with some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of joy. So you pack things away and a lot of times people will get stuck in that place when things get buried and as I said before, you know, if you don't express those thoughts and feelings based on those experiences, they will express themselves, right? Yeah. yeah. They'll come out in unhealthier ways. They'll come out in emotional kind of dysregulation or they'll come out in physical illnesses. There's all sorts of ways that they will be expressed if, if not released in a in a healthy manner. So hypnotherapy is one of those ways to accomplish that. <clears throat> and I also want to say it's never too late. It's never too late to do this work. I do this work with all people of all ages. You know, I, I've worked with people who have even been, um, like I, I worked with somebody who was 80 years old, wow. you know, and, and we did that healing around things that she carried for all those years. And she experienced that relief and it was, it was a beautiful thing. So it's never too late to do this work on emotional healing that will free you and allow you to experience joy and fulfillment in your life. There's just so much suffering that goes on today that, that um, can be healed. You know, it comes out and that suffering comes out and, depression and anxiety like i said physical illnesses that that it even comes out in violence yeah. and, you know, racism and hatred yeah of it oh, comes yeah. out but help is available well that's help always available. good to know yeah Remind us how we can get help from you just tell us the website before we continue the website is tracy claremont hypnotherapy.com and my email is hypno with Tracy, and that's T R A C Y at yahoo.com. And I also have an Instagram page, um, same name, Tracy Claremont Hypnotherapy, if you'd like to reach out to me and schedule an appointment. Oh, thank you so much. Sorry, my phone is not on um, silent. Uh, anyway, no problem. what else are we discussing? Uh, I just, just wanted just to talk a little bit about, uh, oh, that that was a great cue for the next oh, thing I was going to talk about. I'm glad. Go ahead. I was going to talk about, um, you know, some of the things in our modern world that kind of put obstacles in our way as far as emotional health and and wellness, you know, we live in a world full of technology. That was perfect timing. <laughs> and I do appreciate technology because without that, I wouldn't be sitting here on a podcast with you today. So there are great things about technology, and I do appreciate those things in our modern world. However, I will say that our modern world and technology has really served to interfere with our ability to genuinely Focus, connect concentrate, everything it's always Focus, right non-stop yes learn relationship you know we learn to regulate our emotions through experience in relationship and you know you can't do that through relationships through a, a phone or through social media it needs to be face-to-face -face, genuine human contact which is how we humans have survived always through groups you know, being in groups of people. And it's no different today, only now, you know, our grouping is is challenged, it's different. You know, you can't, like 10,000 likes on social media is not the equivalent to even one face-to-face -face connection in human relationship, right? And that, that emotional growth happens in face-to-face um, -face human relationship our emotional, our ability to regulate our emotions happens. We learn that in relationship. That's why, you know, when when we have a baby and they're crying, you know, they they can't go to a phone and get comfort from somebody on a phone. They look to to a human to provide that comfort, and that comfort comes from human contact. You hold your children close to you. You know, you rock through movement. You comfort them, regulate their nervous system. 
we sing to our kids, right, to help regulate their nervous system. We touch them, we stroke them, like we rub our kids' back at night to get them to relax. Those are all human contact um, situations where emotional regulation is being learned. And there's just no other way to do that other than human contact. And then, you know, we do that throughout, I mean, even into our adulthood, you know, a hug from somebody who you're connected to and trust is very healing when you're dysregulated, right? Uh, unless you have some big traumatic stuff in your subconscious that doesn't allow you to have human contact and those are things to work on. So, you know, it's almost like with technology today, it's almost like, emotional malnutrition or something for our brain. So we really need, you know, we have these obstacles to overcome. But the great news is, is again, it's never too late. You know, our brains, they always want to heal. They want to grow. They want to organize. They remain adaptive throughout our entire lifetime. That's why I can work with somebody who's 80 years old and make great gains, you know. They're always ready to establish new neural pathways, create new neural pathways, and um, toward, you know, moving towards that emotional healing and well, well-being. So, of course, the first step in all of that is making the choice to heal, like right? making the choice to do it, to do the work. Again, that can be a scary thing, and I completely understand that, but it's all important to do so you can, you know, reach a place of fulfillment and and uh joy in your life you have more moments of that than we want, we want more, we want more of that. That. yes absolutely and we want to feel comfortable within ourselves we want to have love and acceptance of our own selves yeah you know yeah. That, that's a big goal it's a big job getting there but it, those it, are it. the things that lead to fulfilling joyful lives and our ability to have genuine connection and relationship with other humans, right? Yeah, that we even take for granted so much. Yeah, it's all important. All yeah, important. Here, I'm like, all right, I'm like, I want to get you for social media. I'm like, I want to take a picture. Look, I want to do this. I want to do this. your mind's always thinking, you know, right? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So the importance of that genuine face to face um, human connection is just so important. And um, I, you asked me last podcast, I think, you know, if hypnotherapy is always successful. And I just wanted to say um, about that. I've never had hypnotherapy not be successful. Okay. But I, I did, did want to say that, um, and it's always been, a, a, it's always, my clients have always come out of it with a very good feeling and kind of a, uh, very interested in the things that came up that they weren't they weren't like conscious memories and making those connections and figuring mm -hmm. out what's causing the issue and then the the recording at the end is very uh, feels very good you know it's all of those things that new suggestions that you want to be driven by and um a few years back i was going through my own difficult time in my life i had i had lost my my little sister, she had passed away. It was a very difficult time mm -hmm. for me. And I remember around that time, I, I was really focused on the word. Oh, wow. I was focused on the word hope, like hope that things can be better. Hope for a better tomorrow. Hope that this gets easier. And went out so much so that I even like, I even tattooed it on my wrist. I don't know if you can see that. So that I could look down on my wrist and see hope, keep hope. Well, all of these late years later, what I've come to understand is hope isn't strong enough. You know, it, it's kind of a maybe it will be better, maybe it won't, but we need to have the belief. So I replaced hope with belief that we have to believe that it can be better, that it will be better. Belief is a very strong word. If we embrace the belief that things can be better and will be better, we believe that you know, behaviors can change. We believe that life can be joyful and peaceful, right? That is that is the strong, strong, strong word that we need to move forward with, okay? More so than even hope. So we can't change those experiences of the past, but we can change how they affect us 
today, right? And we can believe that it will and can get better. So if you come into hypnotherapy with that belief, then absolutely it will be successful because you've already done half the work, right? You've already gotten to the place of belief. And then the hypnotherapy just comes to support all of that. And it, it uh, you know, we say in hypnotherapy that you can't fix what you don't understand. And through hypnotherapy, going back into those experiences and, and memories, we do the detective work to figure out and to understand what drives these issues. And once you have an understanding about them, then we can do healing around them. So I'll give you, I'll give you an example. <clears throat> I did hypnotherapy with a man who came to me and his issue was that he was choosing toxic relationships. He had a, and he was in one at the time that he came to me, mm -hmm. a relationship where he just was not valued and there was just tons of fighting. He was always trying to fix it, make it happy mm -hmm. and whatnot. But, and he'd had a few of these mm -hmm. relationships and he really was feeling, the feeling he came with was just miserable and hopeless, right? And he, he didn't know if hypnotherapy could help him with this, but he was like, I don't know what else to try. <laughs> so I'm trying this. <clears throat> so we, um, we went into a, a nice relaxed state of hypnosis. We brought up the feelings and the issue. And then we went back to scenes related, like related to this issue, like the core beginning of this issue that he was experiencing. So we went back to the first scene and he was a young adult. A lot of times we go back right into childhood, but with him we went into his young adulthood. And he had he was in the hospital. He'd been in a very serious car accident. He had been driving rec recklessly in a high state of emotion. So he he wasn't actually suicidal, but he was um, okay with killing himself in a car accident as he was driving recklessly. Didn't really care if he lived or died. And then he woke up in the hospital and he was seriously, severely injured, like had almost lost his life. So when he woke up, he was in a coma for a while, he woke up and he realized that um, in the scene, he noticed his mom wasn't there, mother wasn't there. In fact, she hadn't come to the hospital and she lived in the area. And she never did come to the hospital. The only person that did come to the hospital during all of his long recovery was his brother. And when we, when I asked him, like, what is he feeling in that? He was saying he was forgotten, not cared about, not loved, not good enough, not worthy, a failure. Those were all the, the feelings that came from that scene. And then we went to the second scene, and then he was a 10-year-old child in this scene. He was living on a farm, and he was working, 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 doing chores, really working hard, and was picturing himself, you know, doing these chores and just sweating and working so hard, and his siblings were doing no chores. They were doing whatever they wanted. He was the only one working, and he describes that he was working hard to please his mother, and when he went to his mother and told her all these things that he'd done and showed her, he did not receive what he was hoping for. In fact, she um, was unkind to him. She said, you know, berated him. He hadn't done enough. He never, she was criticizing what he had done and degrading him and um, leaving him to feel unloved, um, unwanted, like he, like he couldn't do enough to, to um, gain her acceptance. So then we left that scene and we went to the, the third scene, the last scene. And in this scene, he went all the way back to the womb. And he was in the womb of his mother. And he, I said, what are you feeling, experiencing, sensing? And he said that his mother was extremely upset that she was pregnant. She did not want to be pregnant and she wanted to get an abortion. She wanted to abort him. And she was saying things about ruining this pregnancy was ruining her life and she wanted an abortion but she was also being told that she couldn't it wasn't her choice and she was going to have this pregnancy 
her parents were telling her that she had to have this pregnancy and she was feeling trapped in the situation. Actually, I don't know if it was her parents or a husband telling, anyway, that she had to have this pregnancy and she was feeling trapped in the situation and she did not want this child. So the feeling from this scene in utero, which is amazing that we can have memories that are in utero, was that of feeling unloved, unwanted, alone, desperate for acceptance, heartbroken that that he wasn't wanted to this degree. So we took all these scenes and we made the connections between his choice of relationship today and those experiences. And he put it together that he was, you know, again, chasing love from women that were unable to give that kind of love. Mm. He was desperately trying to gain their love, but they were women who were just like his mom and not going to give him that love and acceptance. They didn't, they didn't have that ability. So again, working with, you know, the, doing the healing around that and, you know, that healing, it's, it's gaining the, the recognition and then putting in the suggestions about, you know, I survived against all odds. I'm meant to be here. I have purpose. I have meaning. I don't need the love from my mom. I no longer need that. I can easily find love as a grown man, better love that is respectful and caring and not dependent. And But instilling all of that in there and then having him just take that home and do the self-hypnosis and listen and listen. Those kind of feelings have great impact on fulfillment and joy in your life. And it did with him, you know, that it really did have a, a great impact on him. So that's just an example. Of, that's a great of example. Him. And how is he today after all your sessions? He split up with the woman that he was with, and he has chosen more fulfilling relationships that, you know, where people who actually value him, you know, that he understands, excuse me, and has that, that knowing and that acceptance and love for himself. So it's possible. Uh, Change is there for you. If you're listening, it is possible to it is possible. fix whatever you think is wrong. And Tracy, um, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. We are almost out of time. Unfortunately, uh -huh. I know we started three minutes late, but I can't stay longer. Um, I needed to ask mm -hmm. you, how did you want to end today and tell us um, how we can reach you? Again, just want to end today with <laughs> knowing that everybody knowing that, you know, suffering does not have to continue. There are ways to heal. Hypnotherapy is one of those. Even life coaching, getting support that. Yeah that is meaningful is so healing in itself so help us out there i can be reached via email on hypno with tracy and it's t-r-a-c-y at yahoo.com i can be reached on my website tracy claremont hypnotherapy and that's t-r-a-c-y c-l-a-i-r-m-o-n-t hypnotherapy.com or on instagram with the same name and i would love to work with you i love doing this work Thank you so much. Pleasure having you here. I'm sure we will connect again, if not here in the future. Uh, we don't have a choice. We're connected for life now. Pleasure <laughs> being you with so you and speaking with you. Really, you're awesome. And thank you so much for everything. Have a great day. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. 
Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.